All right, we just submitted our first assignment. And now it's time to start the concept phase on Unit 5, which is a fantasy creature that we're designing from at least five different sources, right? Likely more. So this unit, just like uh, Unit 4, had question of the day one, which we're going to discuss next class. This has question of the day two in it. Question of the day two is an incredibly important question of the day because it relates to the only required reading we have for this semester, which is chapter two linked in your course outline. And this question of the day has everything to do with the legal boundaries around using other people's pixels. Right? And other people's rights to use our pixels. So how we protect it, how you can license your work, how we can understand copyright. And there's some Google Slides here that can kind of walk you through some things we'll talk about in class. It will be a good discussion. But what I ask you to do is to be aware of this question and to give it some sort of answer, preferably by February 12th, right? To get full credit, you'll, you'll write more than 100 words on it, just like we did for question of the day one. But even if you miss that deadline, you're still encouraged to go back. You can still get credit for it. All right. Then we go to the past instructor examples of this project. And we will have the option of animating these guys after, right? But first, we have to create them, these fantasy creatures. And just like our landscapes, we're going to sketch them first. And just like our landscapes, we have to kind of have an idea of what we want first. So one way we can start conceptualizing is to think of our first assignment. I did a surreal desert, right? A surreal desert at night. So I can kind of think what kind of creature might live in that environment. Because after we create this creature, we're going to be compositing them into this environment right? for one of our proving grounds. And what kind of creature am I interested in doing? Do I want something that slithers? Do I want something that swims? Do I want something that flies? Do I want something that gallops? Right? Do I want something with a long neck? Do I want something with armor? Do I want something with horns or all of the above? It is really hard to come up with something from nothing. And all creature design, all monster design, if we look at uh, the home page of the course, remember the shortcut under assignments, so we'll be looking at this more next class, has some extra assets besides just a shortcut for where you can post it. And this one talks about R.J. Palmer, who's a creature designer, and whose big professional break came with the, the Detective Pikachu movie, because for a long time before that movie, he was making kind of designs of quote unquote believable Pokemon, you know, based on on his skills of recreating dinosaurs and, you know, understanding creature design from an anatomical level. So what we're doing is something similar, but we need some sort of reference point, something to be inspired by. So maybe we have favorite animals already and we want to do some sort of variation on that like combine a chameleon with a crocodile, with a bearded lizard, with a dragonfly. I don't know. You know, just throwing things out. But how would you draw that? How would you sketch it? So I think it always works well for me to start with Pokemon, just for inspiration. So my idea is to basically look for usually two Pokemon that might relate to my setting. And I could do it right from this image. Like I can open this image up in a new tab and I can just zoom in on it. But of course you can do your own web search for, for Pokemon. So oh, it keeps downloading. Here we go. I'll just look at this. And this is just a few. I think there's over a thousand Pokemon now. And some of them are better designed than others. But what the standard kind of Pokemon design gives you is a really clean silhouette. 
So what do I mean by that? This is key to character design and creature design. If you just turn them into shadows, right? They still communicate really clearly what their anatomy is. The ones with really simple silhouettes have incredibly simple anatomy, right? But the ones with kind of complicated anatomy, that is shown through the silhouette. You know, the tail going through a three-quarter view. Like if they're four-legged creatures, you see how all four legs are separated on the, on the floor or on the ground if they fly. So I'm going to, I want to do kind of a flying creature, I think. So I want to do like bird Pokemon and maybe just get some ideas. I know they're always updating them. And then what kind of looks like a high surreal desert kind of bird that maybe gives me some basic shapes I can work with. And I know we all, we all have our favorites. But I don't think it's going to be a bird that's too um, fluffy, right? And I like the look of this guy, kind of the woodpeckery one. And I like this one, which is very different and angular. See if anything else catches my eye. This is a nice silhouette as well. It can be fan art. You know, just Pokemons are kind of a nice concept in general because they have to communicate this imaginary creature very quickly. All right, so if I take these, I'm going to make a folder for assignment two. This is my creature composite. And now I'm going to start sketching. And no matter how comfortable or uncomfortable you are with drawing, the sketching is incredibly helpful here, just like it was for the foreground, middle ground, background, you know, outline of your, of your landscape. And then we will be able to improve upon your sketch once you bring something in. Once you have something, we can always work with it. But don't wait to do anything until you feel like you can do it well. You just have to be brave and jump in and do it. So I'm going to use Photoshop here, but I recommend you just use your sketchbook and a mechanical pencil unless you're really comfortable with digital sketching. And I'm going to make a new file. I'm just going to use a default size here. And I'm going to use, pretend this white is my whole sketchbook. I'm not going to try to fill up the sketchbook. Instead, there we go. I am going to reference those Pokemon, those three. And what I'm going to be looking for is their basic shapes. So again, to see them a little bigger, I can say show view options. Just like we did with our landscape, I can view them by name. I can collapse the grid spacing between them. And this kind of makes it a design board for me. And now as I sketch... I'm really drawn to this pose, kind of a combination of this pose and this pose. Maybe I want to flip this, you know, just a quick transform. So I can see them all facing the same direction. And now what's the basic shape of any creature design? Vertebrate or invertebrate? It's always going to be the cranium, the thing that's the biggest shape in the head. Because when we see creature designs, we expect them to have something that's a head, right? And that's the thing that tells us the direction they're moving. It's the focal point. And almost all craniums are circular to start with, right? So I'm going to start with kind of a circular, maybe a little bit egg-shaped cranium. You can see that there. You can see it here. You can see it here. Now we have a jaw, a mandible, a beak. You know, something that attaches to that cranium. And I get to just design, what kind of beak do I want? Well, I like the funkiness of this beak. That makes it kind of look like it's carnivorous, right? Like it scavenge, scavenges. So how can I draw that? Well, I can use circles. I can use triangles. I can use squares. 
I can use wedges, which are triangles with the head cut off. And you can kind of make these shapes together. So you can see the rectangle, the triangle, the wedge. You know, that's kind of the shape I'm thinking. Doesn't need to be great. Then I want to think, how big do I want the eye? Well, instead of that little beady eye, I like the idea of a really cute open eye. So maybe make a big space for that. Just big ovals. And then I like the little uh, calic on this too. Maybe not as intense as that, right? So maybe this kind of clean, I'm combining these influences. Now, I have to connect this with the body. So the cranium connects to a neck. Invertebrates don't have spines, right? They have exoskeletons, think like bugs. But they still will have what we think of as something that connects the head with the, the chest or the, the main thorax or the body. So we do kind of a, a gesture line that holds these things together. And then we the first decision we have is how long is the neck? Because wherever we start the rib cage, that's going to determine the length of the neck. So I think I'm going to put it up pretty close. I'm going to make it a short neck. And then I decide the size of the rib cage, another big oval. Then what connects underneath the rib cage? It's the hips. It's another oval turned on its side. You can see the hips there, the rib cage there. Here the hips are bigger than the rib cage. I kind of like that. That's kind of a cute shape, right? have big, big hips. And this is small hips, bigger ribcage, you know, more tapered. So you're just kind of playing around with your silhouette. And then that's going to help you understand if, if there's a tail, what is it doing? And I might, I like this split tail idea. So I might split the tail off the spine into two. But I might not make it feathers, you know, maybe I'll make this out of something else like lizards or something. I don't know. Okay, now what about feet? So they're going to connect with the pelvis and they need to kind of come out, then come in, and then be whatever shape I want them to be. I'm going to make them kind of birds of prey talons. I'm thinking like turkey vultures. And maybe a shape like this. Now I've sketched creatures for a long time, right? I could just steal shapes directly from inspirations, and they're just made of a lot of triangles. Right? Sometimes I'll curve the triangles, the rectangles a little bit. But basically, you just want to know what kind of angle you're looking for, for your compositing. And then obviously, I need wings. And because this is a pretty imposing silhouette so far, it looks kind of dangerous, right? It's not super athletic looking, but it looks sharp and scary and it has lots of like sharp turns in its negative space. So I want to diffuse that a little bit, make it a little comical. Not cute necessarily, though it will have the cute eye. But I'm going to give it tiny little wings. Because this is fantasy. So I'm going to use these kind of wings for my basic shapes. But they're only going to be about this big. And is that believable? Not really at all, right? But this is fantasy. This is fun. So kind of cartoonishly small wings. If I need more space, of course, I can always go to canvas size, give myself some more height, make it a square, for instance. And then I can flare out that wing a little bit. So now I've sketched it. I kind of like how this silhouette is looking. It's going to look like he's wearing a diaper or something. He has this really wide pelvis, these little talons coming out. He's got this split tail. He's got a short neck. He's got the big eyes. Maybe I want to tilt the head a little bit so I can see it a little bit more in three-quarter view. So maybe I see nostrils, something like that. And now i got to think, okay, where am I going to composite this from? So I'm going to use Pixabay. And I'm going to be looking for photos. And just like landscapes, a lot of people put animal photos up, right? So if I put vulture, that might make sense. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Already cut out. 
and copy and creative copy.